Hi, welcome to People Be Like. I'm Magdalene. Um, I'm a journalist for Mel Magazine in Los Angeles, and I am a uh, self-identified juggalo expert, maybe a little bit of a juggalette myself. Um, juggalos are fans of the rap duo Insane Clown Posse. You may have heard of them. They've been in the news quite a bit the last few years uh, because the FBI defines juggalos as a gang. And they're pretty recognizable. They wear clown face paint. They have a rich visual culture to them. You kind of, when you see a juggalo, you know it's a juggalo, especially because they're dressed kind of like murdery hip hop clowns. I took an interest in juggalos from a very young age. Uh, my older sister went to rehab when she was like 15 and she came out and she was like, the other kids in there were all juggalos. They listen to music about like chopping up bodies and mass murders, making them happy. And there was all this weird clown stuff. And you know, I was like eight and I was like, that is the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life, obviously. And it stuck with me my whole life. And then I got to college and I decided I'm going to write a thesis about juggalo subculture. So I went to the gathering of the juggalos in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This peaceful Northeast Oklahoma City field will turn into its own adult theme park when the gathering of the juggalos music festival comes this July. I think with every generation of music, every band has fans and they have names for them, you know? Uh, these are called the Juggalos and Juggalettes. Got to meet a ton of real Juggalos, got to see Insane Clown Posse perform live, and really got to just embed with the community. So the carnival has historically been associated with changing roles, causing chaos, um, and subverting the everyday. And so there's a lot of misconceptions about Juggalos. One of the biggest things is that they're creepy, scary, I mean their music is typically about killing people and chopping them up and there's one song about falling in love with a ghost and then killing a bunch of people so that your relationship doesn't get found out. Weird stuff like that. So I didn't really know what I was going to be getting into when I went to the festival, but it was probably the most fun and welcoming music festival I've ever been to. Unlike a lot of other festivals where you're kind of trying to like stunt on everybody and like show how much money you have or how cool your clothes are. It's really just about celebrating each other. And it's also really cheap. It's like $200 for a four day pass and you're sleeping on the campgrounds and you can pretty much just like coast by the whole time without spending any money. Was there an experience at the carnival that surprised you? I mean, it was all pretty weird. You're in the dirt basically the whole time. Like literally you're very dirty <laughs> and you will get a Fago shower, which is when they take Fago soda, um, which is made in the Detroit area, and shake up a bottle. They open the cap and they spray it on you. The Insane Clown Posse will do that when they're on stage. There can be hundreds of those bottles shaken up during an Insane Clown Posse show. So I grabbed the two liter Fago and I busted them in the head with it. And everybody cheered and everybody loved it. There was like a trolley that went around the whole festival grounds. And if you're on the trolley or you're standing by the trolley as it passes by, in either situation, you're probably gonna be hit with a bottle of Fago. <laughs> and you're gonna get sticky. Like I was very sticky and covered in Oklahoma dust my whole time there. I mean, we never thought about it, but I'm sure you should take towels, but we never do for sure. <laughs> yeah, we always forget. So that is one of the juggalo traditions. Being, be, kind of being sticky and dirty, that in itself is a subversive experience. Juggalo culture is very much like a middle America, lower class uh, subculture. And in many ways, it's like a resistance to like class inequality. Most of um, Insane Clown Posse's albums are actually about like class warfare. Um, their story is like a narrative of clowns and e evil carnival traveling into wealthy suburbs and killing people for their sins against, uh, against lower class neighborhoods. So as a subculture of inequality in like middle America, how has that kind of led into pop culture that you're seeing now stick 
Well, so right now on TikTok, uh, there's like this trend called like clown check is usually what I see it referred to as, um, where clowns in general, I think are kind of having a moment in pop culture on TikTok. People are enjoying doing clown makeup and sometimes that translates to doing scary clown makeup. And so a few uh, Insane Clown Posse songs have built a lot of momentum on TikTok and people are doing like a clown check and then there's like a transition and they're in scary clown makeup. Clown check. I see and so it's really become a meme on TikTok, I think without people knowing at all what juggalos even are. Um, an article that I wrote recently for Mel was about how that trend is happening and how real juggalos feel about it. And for the most part, they just think like, it's kind of lame that their image is being co-opted when right now juggalos are still considered gang members, which is pretty much, it's, it's kind of entirely unfounded. Do you not think they're gang members? No, they're definitely not gang members because there is not any sort of uh, organized, uh, organized hierarchy of crime. <laughs> like, it's like some juggalos commit crimes, but it's not because they're juggalos. It's not because like some juggalo above them told them to do it. Like, it's not, it's just not a gang in, at all. It's just like a group of people who like the same thing and kind of see themselves as outcasts who get to all band together because they're outcasts and this juggalo culture is a way for them to do that. One of my favorite songs from Insane Clown Posse is called In My Room. And it's about an outcast teen boy who has no friends. And all he does is he comes home from school and he turns off his lights and he waits for it to get dark out because his lover, a ghost, will come out. And one of the lines is that she slips him her tongue and it tastes like bacon. That's a pretty good line. Um, and then the ghost says that the neighbors saw the two of them together and the ghost disappears. And so he kills the whole family of his neighbors and is just like waiting for the ghost to come back, but she never does. That's a good song. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a great narrative. It's a, like, so many of their songs are like that. Um, they're probably their best known song besides the one about magnets, how do they work, miracles, which them is just, that's them loving the universe and just being in awe of the magic of science. Um, they're also, Insane Clown Bossy is also religious. Um, they are Christian. Um, yeah. But at the end of one of their albums, they say that this whole carnival that they have is actually a metaphor for God and that they hope that all juggalos can find God. Um, they don't really make much talk of like even Jesus, but they do make reference to God. Um, and it is like a pretty traditional Christian God, um, but they don't talk about having people go to church or stuff like that. Yeah, it's actually, it was quite powerful to hear that song live when they're talking about God. You're like, oh, like this is a very spiritual thing for people. Like this is like, this is people's life, like this is their worldview. Um, and it's a way for them to feel connected in a world where they might otherwise feel like outcasts. A lot of the people I spoke to have been, um, they've, they've went to jail, um, they've attempted suicide, they've had drug problems. Um, there are plenty of actually just like completely normal people who have no legal history or any drug problems at all. There's like, I've, I've heard of like juggalo lawyers. I've heard of it. <laughs> For a lot of people, they've been complete outcasts their whole life and that this was their way to come together and like have a community and have a family. The concept of family is probably the most important in juggalo culture. They shout family, go family, family. <laughs> Like, that's huge, shouting family. Did family go? Yeah, there were kids, there were kids there. But they mean, they more mean family as the family of the collective. Um, but there are children who go to the gathering. 
I, it's not like recommended, but <laughs> there are kids who go and it can be a perfectly fine time. The moment I got to the festival, I was like walking to the entrance. If somebody walks the other way, they say whoop whoop, and you have to say whoop whoop back. Like that's, it's like, hello, how are you? It's nice to see you. It means everything. So is uh, most mother clown love, um, which is, they usually use it as an acronym. Um, but most mother clown love, it's a big, you know, love to each other type of thing. And then family, both, all of those are big concepts. Yeah. I love it, and I wish I was going this year. Genuinely, I love the experience, I love going. People are so nice. But I will say, in my experience, when I went to the gathering, I wouldn't have identified myself as a juggalo, but when I went and people asked me, I was like, I'm, I don't know, what makes a juggalo? Because I wanted to hear it in their words. And it's like, well, you basically just have to like, decide you are one. So if you're here and you're having a good time, then that makes you a juggalo. And so for that reason, it's like, I guess I kind of am a juggalette, a female juggalo, um, because it's like, yeah, I think that's a good time. Um, I respect these people, and why would I identify myself as not being a part of this community if I like you guys so much? So, yeah. <laughs> so if you're interested in keeping up with my juggalo investigations, um, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Magda J. Taylor or on melmagazine.com, M-E-L, like Melanie. Um, and uh, yeah, you can read all my articles there. So thanks for tuning in. Yeah, <laughs> it was so great.